Now let us talk about the part three of the development of the eye that is the development of the retina. Just a second. Yeah. Now, as we all know that the retina is divided into two parts, the inner part, which is the neurosensory retina and the outer pigmented epithelium, which is also called the retinal pigment epithelium. That is our RPE or the outer pigment epithelium. Now, let us see how are they formed and from where are they formed? OK, so I hope you remember this diagram from our previous uh, parts of the de on development of the eye. This is nothing but our optic cup. The optic cup on the outside, uh, yeah, actually the optic cup can be divided into two parts, the outer thinner part and the inner thicker part. This outer part of the optic cup, that is this portion, will be developing into the pigmented retinal pigment epithelium whereas the inner portion of the optic cup is going to give rise to the inner neurosensory retina okay and the peripheries of this cup just the peripheral ends of this cup is going to give rise to epitheliums epitheliums of what epitheliums of the iris and the epithelium of the ciliary body now if you would remember from part two i told you that the iridopupillary membrane attaches in the periphery of the optic cup and from here only the epithelium of the iris and the ciliary body will develop whereas the stroma of the iris and the ciliary body will develop from the vascular mesenchyme along with the choroid okay so let us see how this develops okay so what happens uh, to the inner wall of the optic cup now i have already told you that the inner wall of the optic cup is forming the neurosense retina because and also it is a thicker part of the optic cup why it is thicker because it has to form about nine layers of the retina whereas the outer pigmented rp is only a single layer of retina so overall there are about 10 layers in the retina out of which the outermost layer is the rpe and that rp is form, formed from the outer layer of the optic cup and the inner layer of the optic cups are forming the neurosensory retina now these inner layers are further divided into three layers okay the matrix cell layers the mantle cell layer and the marginal cell layer okay and this division is from outside to inwards so the matrix cell layer is going to form the rods and cones the mantle cell layer is going to form the bipolar cells the ganglion cells and the supporting cells and the marginal layer is going to form the nerve fiber layer. Now, if, uh, if you go into the anatomy of the retina, you would know that the arrangement is also like that. So we have a retinal pigment epithelium and then we have our rods and cones. And after the rods and cones, we have the bipolar cells. After the bipolar cells, we have the ganglion cells and the axons of the ganglion cells are going to form the nerve fiber layer from outside to inside. And that is how the inner part of the optic cup is dividing into the matrix, mantle and marginal layer and finally forming the structures. Now let us talk about development of the optic nerve. In the development of the optic nerve, we are going to talk in terms of the four main structures and the fifth one important process. So the four main structures in the optic nerve is how does the optic nerve fibers develop? What about the glial tissue or the glial system? That is the supporting system. And that supporting system will have septae. So that's the glial septae. What is it formed of? And finally coming to the sheath of the optic nerve. So the now let us talk about the development of the optic nerve fibers. Now we already know that the optic vesicle looked something like this, which was coming from the prosencephalon. And the initial part of the optic vesicle was constricted and this was forming the optic stalk. Okay, so just a second. Yeah. So the initial part was the optic stop. So what happens is as the ganglion cell layer is growing, 
okay and the ganglion cell layer is forming the axons from it these axons are going to finally invade the optic stalk okay so they are going to grow into this optic stalk and uh, they grow through a fissure that is again the choroidal fissure so by sixth week these fibers are going to grow into that optic stalk and when they grow they will form the optic nerve fibers so now you will ask okay fine we have fibers now what about the support the fibers need some support also right so that is the glial system or the glial tissue of the optic nerve that will develop from the outer wall of the optic stalk and because it is directly developing from this wall of the optic stalk it is neuroectodermal in origin now there will also be certain cells which are called the astroglial cells and these cells are derived from the inner wall of the optic stalk okay and they will form the glial septa so if you see this optic stalk it has two layers so the outer layer is forming the glial system and the inner layer is forming those septa all right and these are formed by the astroglial cells now from where does the sheath of the optic nerve comes from so for that i would like to ask you from where does the sheath of the brain comes from as we have already seen it is coming from the mesenchyme so similarly the sheath of optic nerve is also coming from the mesenchyme so this is what i want you to remember that the optic nerve fibers are coming from the uh, growth of the nerve fiber layer only the nerve fiber layer is coming from the optic from the inner part of the optic cup the glial system is coming from the neuroectodermal cells of the optic wall again the sheath is coming from the mesenchyme now what about the myelination of the optic nerve the, if you see this is an optic nerve the myelination of the optic nerve is going to start from the brain end and then it is going to progress towards the eye so this is what i mean to say that it starts distally that means it is starting from the brain and then coming towards the eye and it does not come totally inside the eye there is a part where the optic nerve is attached to the eye uh, or rather to say that the nerve fiber layers will be coming from the retina into the optic nerve through certain fenestrations which are present in the sclera and when they enter through these fenestrations okay so here these fenestrations are called the lamina cribrosa beyond the lamina cribrosa we do not have myelination myelination is present just up to the lamina cribrosa now the next question is who provides this myelination now it's very important to know and remember that the optic nerve behaves like cns now in cns we know that the myelination is coming from the oligodendrocytes and therefore optic nerve is also getting myelination from the oligodendrocytes now remember that these myelination will stop at the lamina cribrosa and it is completed just before birth and therefore but in certain people there will be myelination which will come right up to the retina and you will be able to see certain myelinated nerve fibers near the optic nerve and these will be like whitish color fibers which look feathery in appearance and these are called the myelinated nerve fibers or the congenitally opaque nerve fibers and uh, this is this was a, a clinical or an applied aspect for you uh winding up let us talk about the development of ciliary body iris and the development of the vitreous okay the ciliary body we should know epithelium remember the previous diagram i showed you that it was the periphery of the optic cup that was forming the epithelium of what epithelium of the ciliary body and the iris so epithelium of both the ciliary body and the iris are neuroectodermal in origin and what about the stroma stroma is coming from the vascular mesenchyme now important thing where many people do mistake is the development of sphincter and dilator pupillae now sphincter and dilator pupillae they both are muscles but still they are coming from the neuroectodermal origin let us quickly talk about the development of vitreous 
vitreous is divided into three parts based on the chronology in which it appears that means we have a primary or a primitive vitreous that appears first then we have a secondary vitreous which is also called a definitive or the proper vitreous with which we live and then we have a tertiary vitreous which is little bit accessory now let us see one by one what is it the primary vitreous is mesenchymal in origin and it also has the hyaloid system of vessels and therefore it is vascular now if you would remember from part 2 i told you that there this was there was a vascular layer of the mesenchyme which was entering through the choroidal fissure and coming inside the eye and forming the vitre the hyaloid system of vessels so the same mesenchyme will form our primary vitreous also this primary vitreous is later going to get replaced and will be substituted by the hyalocytes which are secreted by the wall of the optic vesicle and this is called the secondary vitreous or the proper vitreous and this vitreous is neuroectodermal origin whatever is coming from the wall is neuroectodermal and this vitreous is avascular Finally, we have one more vitreous which is called the tertiary vitreous and this tertiary vitreous is also neuroectodermal because it is arising from the ciliary region. Now, it is arising from the ciliary region. Just a second, sorry. So, if you draw this optic cup, ciliary region means the part from which the ciliary body is coming right from that part a part of the vitreous will be secreted and that will form the tertiary vitreous and it is represented by the ciliary zonules that is the structures which are going to connect the lens with the ciliary body okay i hope i'm clear till here and this is how you get primary secondary and tertiary vitreous that's all for today thank you and have a nice day